Hi, eighth graders. I just saw you today, which is Tuesday, I come to find out. I had been thinking it was Wednesday when Karina asked me about the hiding place worksheet's not being due until Wednesday. I'm like, it is Wednesday, but no, it was Tuesday today. It is Tuesday. I have gotten so confused with the days because we have quite the agenda as far as to when we have to have our video lessons recorded and then posted on YouTube, but in private mode or unlisted mode until we make them public to you. And anyway, it's very confusing and I can't remember which day is which, let alone if up is down or down is up. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't help that I'm old. <laughs> so anyway, all right. So again, today uh, is Tuesday and I'm recording for Friday. That gives you an idea of again, how we have to do things in advance. So I just saw you. And again, I apologize for that uh, mix up, but this week was a learning week. No penalties for being late or anything. Uh, it does make sense now why not everybody had their hiding place uh, papers into me. So good, good to know that you're not slackers. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and get started on the right notes. So I'll do my screen sharing as has become the norm. And uh, I like this. It's just making me think I want to get out there. It's beautiful right now. It was kind of cold and overcast this morning, but now it's gorgeous. Time to get out and walk the door. So let's get this video done. All right, so our meditation for today is from Psalm 34, verses 17 through 18. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. I really thought this one was a poignant one. There, the Bible is just full of verses like we've had today and then the last few days where the, our Lord wants us to come to him in prayer and supplication when we're in, in trouble. And of course he wants us to hear, wants to hear from us when things are going well as, as well. Um, we sometimes aren't as apt to do that. When we need something, we're right there asking. And when we're through a crisis or whatnot, sometimes we forget to go back and say thank you. I hope we don't do that when all this is said and done. Um, but he does encourage us. He's our father, just like your own father would want you to come with a question or a concern you have and share your burden so that he can help. How much more so our perfect heavenly father wants us to come to him in supplication. And again, it's just beautiful. It's reminding us to cry out because again, he delivers us from our troubles. Uh, he's close to us. So anyway, keep that in mind. Keep that and take it to heart. So let's start with our prayer then this morning. Again, please, with thought and respect. O oh, Master and God, Father Almighty, Lord and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, one divinity and power, have mercy on me, a sinner, and save me, your unworthy servant, in any way you know, for you are blessed unto the ages of ages. Amen. All right. So today is uh, mostly a review. We've been talking about verbs. Now we need to make sure that you can distinguish them from the, ver the verbs and the subjects. I think, again, that was one of our troubles when we were talking about whether we have a compound sentence, a complex sentence, a simple sentence, all of that. You've got to be able to identify the parts. So again, um, this lesson will review how to identify two of the most important parts of speech, verbs and subjects. Being able to identify verbs and subjects will allow you to create complete and clear sentences. It will also help you understand other grammatical concepts like fragments and run-on sentences. Because if you know what makes up a proper sentence, then you'll be able to identify things like a fragment or a run-on and then be able to fix it from there. So let's keep going and check that out. Identifying verbs. Well, identifying action verbs is pretty easy because they are predominantly words that indicate action, whether physical or mental. Um, however, you have to remember that there's another um, group that we, we uh, refer to as ownership verbs, things like had. Um, he had a car last year, but it was wrecked, you know, whatever you want to say. Again, showing ownership. So most of the action verbs are easy because again, they're saying things like run, tell, swim, wish, dream, things that you're doing physically or mentally. But don't forget that category that uh, includes ownership. All right, next group, we have identifying linking verbs. We've just had linking verbs this week. It can be a little bit trickier as they connect the subject to another word or word group 
that identifies or describes the subject rather than demonstrating what the, the subject is doing. So it's not that the subject is doing something, it's that there's some information about the subject or there's a, um, a condition that the subject is in that the verb is um, linking us to or linking the subject to. So look in mind that they express a state of being or condition. They include words like are, is, were, appear, grow, remain, and so on. Look back at your previous notes for uh, further examples. And then we have the last category. Identifying helping verbs can be the trickiest because they are just the little guys helping the main verbs express action or state of being with words. Like, with words like can, may, did, was, would, then, will. Those are the ones I notice a lot on our, our test that we had before the spring break that people weren't including. And I was just taking like a half point off, but they are part of the verb phrase. You know, it's like, I, you know, she had run a marathon. Well, had is still a verb. It's a helping verb. It's helping run, give it context about the, it's been done already, that kind of thing. So again, you have those three classifications and that's how you would identify the verbs. And then you need to remember that um, something that you can always pinpoint, we had that question today in the online Zoom class with the word went. Well, went is a conjugation an ir of an irregular verb to go. You don't say, I go to the store yesterday. No, you say, I went to the store yesterday. Went is the past tense of go or to go is the infinitive. So this is something we all verbs have in common. They're the only part of speech that gets conjugated, meaning that they actually change, in this case the tense, in order to indicate a particular time frame. And then you see a list on the screen of the typical ones. We have present, past, future, progressive present, present perfect, and past perfect. I know we'll get into those more later, but just so you have an idea. Again, the verbs change. All right. So identifying subjects, well, the easiest way to identify the subject is to find the verb first. Find out, again, especially if it's an action verb, you know, you can pinpoint that down, like, okay, great. Who or what is doing that action? But even if it's not, you get start, start just memorizing those helping and linking verbs as well, and that helps. So then you ask yourself who or what performed the verb or is in some way being linked to the verb or by the verb, rather, to subsequent descriptors. In other words, the subject of a sentence performs the action indicated by the verb or is who or what is being linked to an ensuing descriptive word or group, word group. Okay, so your practice sheet, and this is just review, so it should be pretty straightforward. It reviews it up here, what, what we just talked about, the subject. And we're talking mostly about the simple subject because you know that all the descriptors, the, the pretty long-haired, um, friendly girl, there's a lot of descriptors before the word girl. Girl, all I want is girl. That's a simple subject. So we're just talking about that. So again, that's what we're looking for in this exercise. So the practice worksheet is going to be just identical to the homework worksheet, other than, of course, different sentences to figure out what's what. You have, again, two steps. Don't forget. Step one, you're going to underline the verb or verbs. And two, you're gonna highlight the simple subject. For example, more and more people are learning to use the internet. Well, our learning is the verb phrase. In this case, it's a verb phrase because it's more than one. It has a helping verb. And the subject, what, who or what is doing the learning? Well, people. Now, more and more are part of the complete subject, but all I want is the simple subject. So only people is highlighted. The next example, finding information on the internet may seem difficult at first. Remember, may is one of those helping verbs. It can only ever be a helping verb. And then you have seem. So seem is the main verb, may is the helper. So both of those are underlined. If you have any question about those, go back to those lesson sheets or the videos that talked about helping verbs and, the, and linking verbs for that matter for this exercise. But finding information is what may seem. So it's not just information, it's finding information. In this case, it's both of those words. It's a word group. So you're going to go through the practice sheet, these 10, and again, underline any verb or verbs, again, plural, and then highlight the simple subject. 
When you've done that, go and open up the answer key for the practice worksheet, check your work to make sure you're getting it. If you've got more than a few wrong, again, go back to the video or go back to the tutorial worksheet, which is probably quicker, and just kind of see what's up. Go to past tutorials as well. Um, so they might shed some light on it if you're having trouble with knowing what's a verb, helping verb, linking verbs, things like that. Once you think you've got a handle on it, go to the homework. If you still don't think you have a handle on it, of course, approach me in our Zoom session or on uh, our one-to-one -one basis through email. We can set something up. All right, then move on to the homework, which again is going to be exactly the same. I have the same exact same review here. I have it right in front of you so you don't have to keep going back and forth, toggling before, between uh, worksheets and whatnot. And then uh, you just do now only eight for homework. So again, you're underlining the verb or verbs and highlighting the simple subject. Remember, you only need to turn in the homework part to me, not the practice. You already have the answer key. I'm not interested in it at that point. So I hope it is being helpful. So that's all. Just a review of uh, now getting the subject and the verb distinguished, which will get us back to the page of figuring out our complex compound sentences with simple sen sentences, phrases, clauses, what's what. You have to know the parts of speech. So I hope that was helpful. This week's been a, a good review for you and that we're ready to move on to bigger and better stuff next week. All right, take care all, have a wonderful weekend. Um, hopefully I'll see you in the Zoom session, but I don't know, <laughs> this is, how is it, four days before Friday, anything can happen. And if I'm not there, I have my daughter um, has me on speed dial to let me know that the baby is here. And my son-in-law has graciously given up his position to be in the room so that I may be there, because hospitals right now with the coronavirus um, out there are not allowing anybody to be in the hospital waiting rooms or anything like that except your one designated person and i get to do that for my baby girl so if for some reason i'm not there i will definitely email you or give a shout out somehow but that could be where i am she is ready to pop anytime anyway please prayers are appreciated you are always in my prayers and in my heart love you guys <laughs> Bye bye